Hey everyone, why don't we start with a quick prayer. May the words that I speak and the thoughts that we think be pleasing in your sight, dear Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Christmas is always a crazy time in my house. My wife and I have two-thirds of the grandkids on both sides of the family and all of the granddaughters. Add six aunts between the two families. And that's a recipe for two little girls to get a lot of stuff they don't need every year. Sometimes it feels like I just need a bigger house to figure out what to do with all the stuff. And one year, I think it was like five, four or five years ago, one of my sisters-in-law got Amelia one of those blow-up horses that you pump full of air and then they can bounce around and ride on them. We were trying to think of a name for this new pet. And I'll admit, we try to be pretty ridiculous with these toy names. So we were thinking and brainstorming when my youngest sister-in-law suggested we call the horse Neighbor. And that ain't stuck. Do you get it? We couldn't stop laughing. I mean, isn't it hilarious? Okay, well, maybe you had to be there. And I'll bet you have a situation or joke like that that's only funny if you were there. Otherwise, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You had to be there. Or after you get back from a vacation, you show all of your friends the pictures you took while you were gone, and no matter how good those phone cameras get, you'll never really do it justice. You should have just seen how beautiful it was. You had to be there. Have you ever tried to explain to kids that are too young to remember 9-11 the significance of what that event meant to our country? And it's hard because unless you have that close proximity to what when it happened, it's really hard to understand. Sometimes, sometimes you just had to be there. There are benefits and blessings you can only find when you are in the know, when you're, when you're close to what's going on. You have to be here. You have to be near. Now, last week, we focused on part of Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. And today, we're a little closer to the end of that letter. As Paul pens his final thoughts and directions for those followers of Jesus, he leaves them with a reminder. Just four little words, but four very powerful words that are loaded with big connections to awesome blessings from God. And here they are. And maybe make a note of them in your Bible or something. The Lord is near. Told you it was simple. Even though it's a simple idea, it, it's almost like Paul anticipates some pushback on that concept. Is that a fact? What do you mean here? If the Lord is near, right here, right now, what does that look like? And what does that mean for me? And that's why he parks this important thought in the middle of some blessings that stem from this central idea. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If you have faith and remember that the Lord is near, you have a reason to be joyful all the time. He even says that one twice. You can let your Christian gentleness shine in everything you do. And I think sometimes gentleness gets a bad rap because we think gentleness is like a passive thing. It means that you're passive and a bit of a pushover. But I think of it more as a calm, kind spirit. Even when a situation gets heavy and you need to speak up, well, you can do that gently and respectfully. And those are just the first two. Then there are two more. He says that you don't have to be anxious about anything because the Lord is near and you can unload all of your burdens of anxiety on your near and dear God. You don't have to worry about it. Share it with him and let him worry about it. And all that leads to peace, a peace that goes above and beyond anything you can think of or come up with on your own. And I can dream of some pretty awesome peace, but this peace of God protects and guards you. That's something no other peace can do. All these blessings are yours because the Lord is near. I mean, how great is that? But how many of you, when you try putting yourself into this framework of benefits Paul talks about, feel like a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. The Lord is near? Is he really? I mean, I don't know about all of that, but I do know some things that are definitely, most definitely near. 
The end of another year is upon us, and that means, you guessed it, year-end deadlines are fast approaching. Hooray! Or have you heard the news? Inflation is doing what it does and making prices go up and up. And maybe you need to rethink the gifts you plan this year. Maybe some necessities even feel like they're out of reach. And then you have guilt piling on top of that because you aren't going to be able to give your family the Christmas you wanted to give them. That reality is here right now. The big Christmas party with your in-laws is almost here and you almost always end up arguing and getting angry because your worldview is so different from theirs. So much for joy, gentleness, and peace. When did we all become such Scrooges? If you're familiar with A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, um, even if you've just seen the, the Muppets version, you'll know what I'm talking about. So Scrooge is the mean old guy who wants nothing to do with Christmas. He's cynical and pessimistic about the whole holiday. But for him, there's no reason to be joyful or at peace during Christmas. And you find out why that is in the story. Turns out his fiance dumped him around Christmas time. So whenever Christmas rolls around, it brings those hard memories nearer to his heart. And that's why he acts the way he does. He views everything through the lens of the pain and loss that draw near to him every holiday season. If you view your life only from the mountaintop of all of those painful, tough things that we mentioned earlier, what kind of blessings are you going to see? When all of those negative feelings feel closer to you than the Lord does and, and Paul's encouragements are, are far off in the distant. What do you find? Joy? No way. Just deadlines to be met and guilt to carry when we can't keep anyone happy. The Lord is near? Doesn't feel like it. From that attitude, you can think of it like a snowball rolling downhill. If you can't find joy because all those things are pressing in on you, it's hard to let gentleness show through. If you have little to no joy, that's not a recipe for kindness and patience. Usually it means a harsh, critical tone. It means anger wins the day more often than gentleness. Does that sound familiar? And the snowball keeps rolling. Your lack of understanding and kindness feeds your ever-present anxiety. Because they build off of each other. When you're stressed and anxious, you're not gentle. And when you're not kind, patient, and gentle you'll get even more and more stressed. And that's especially true if you look at your lack of understanding and gentleness and find it scary just how short-tempered you were when stress feels so near. But isn't the Lord supposed to be near? The worst part of this awful snowball barreling downhill is all this means no peace. That peace that God gives, peace that is better than anything you can imagine, peace that guards and keeps you safe, that peace isn't there when the only things that feel close to you are your problems, shortcomings, and guilt. Life feels crazed and manic, like you're just running from one problem into the next. That doesn't sound like a peaceful life to me. And you say the Lord is near? Yeah, right. Maybe I'm just on a Christmas classics kick. Uh, I already mentioned a Christmas carol, but another one of my favorites is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And let's just settle the debate up front. The old cartoon with Boris Karloff is the best. But in that story, the Grinch hates Christmas, but the Who's nearby love it a lot. So he makes a plan to steal all their gifts and decorations to make them as miserable as he is. And how does it end? With the Who's all singing hand in hand, even though the Grinch took every last thing that was supposed to give joy during the season. What's the point? He had it all wrong. They weren't joyful, happy, and at peace because of those things. Those things were just an ex part of the results. They were expressions of their joy and peace that were tied to something bigger and deeper than all of that. So, don't be a Grinch. And I don't mean stop being such a grouch and just be joyful because it's, it's no fun when you are always so cynical and pessimistic. What I mean is don't put the cart before the horse, the, the chicken before the egg, or, or whatever other mixed-up priority picture you want to use. Don't let all the trappings of your life and struggle with sin, guilt, and doubt, joyless as those things might be, distract you from the key fact. The Lord is near. Paul is that blunt 
and straightforward. The Lord is near. That's a fact. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. He can be so direct and confident. You can be confident in that fact. Because you don't have to look any further than a manger in Bethlehem at Christmas to see that it's true. The Lord is near. And he isn't just near. He's he's right here. That baby sleeping soundly is your Lord. He is your God in person, in the flesh. He's right there. Jesus laid aside the perfect joy of his heavenly home to draw near to you, to me, to every single sinner on the planet. Your almighty, ever-present God became gentle and meek. He gave up, a, gave up a peaceful life free from sin, hurt, fear, and death. And he was hated and rejected and punished. Why? So that we could find that mind-blowing peace in his name. Jesus did all of that so you could know the Lord is near is a fact. Because he lived it. And he died it too. He drew near enough to experience a death that should have been ours. So instead of the misery of that death, we can find joy and peace in God's presence. The Lord is near. And that fact isn't just a past fact either. The Lord is near right now. He draws near to us in his word when he tells us about himself and his work to bridge the gap between us and him with Jesus. So he could comfort us again with his presence in spite of our sin, doubt, guilt, and pain. He pulls us close to him and makes us rejoice when he baptizes us with his Holy Spirit, when he washes us with his promises. He reminds us that he is near when we take communion. Jesus' own body and blood given on the cross for the full and free forgiveness of our sins. And the day is getting closer and closer when every single person on the planet will look and say, There he is! The Lord is near! So let's make those facts the center of our snowball rolling downhill and see what kind of blessings it picks up along the way. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Joy. Paul encourages us to rejoice always. Don't stop. You don't have a reason to stop. The snowball can't stop once it starts. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Now instead of always feeling like we have to have the gloves up ready to fight or even looking for a fight, we find joy in putting them down and being patient and understanding with each other. Then look at the next being near blessing we enjoy in Jesus. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. The Lord is near to answer our prayers. And there's comfort in having an idea of close proximity to help. Fire departments will often set standards for themselves when it comes to response times. For example, the Seattle Fire Department Their response time standard for the arrival of the first fire engine is four minutes, 90% of the time. And this is the time span between a unit being on route and to on scene. And so the SFD response time standard for the arrival of a full first alarm assignment, that's 15 firefighters, is eight minutes, 90% of the time. So we don't have to be anxious about anything because the Lord is near. Jesus works on our behalf and lays our prayers before the Lord. And his standard response time to our prayers is instantaneous, 100% of the time. He's so reliable and fast. Paul says we pray with thanksgiving for God's answer before he's even responded. That's how good he is. And the last one's pretty great too. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Peace that blows any human peace out of the water. There's this book out there by J.B. Phillips called Your God is Too Small. And the premise is basically this. We try to build God into boxes of our own thoughts and conceptions. When really he's so awesome and great and gracious that he goes above and beyond anything you can imagine. That's the God who gives you peace through Jesus that you can't even begin to fully understand. And you won't. This side of heaven at least. But we have this promise from our Lord that his close proximity to us gives us peace that guards our hearts and minds. There's safety and security for this life in being near, in this being near blessing of your Lord and Savior Jesus. Do you get it now? Do you have the insider knowledge? Look at and enjoy all of the being near blessings your Lord gives. Praise and thank him that he continues to pour out those blessings and so many more through the one who didn't stand on the outside watching, but jumped right in and drew near to us. The Lord is near. 
Amen. And now, this peace of God that surpasses all of our understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.